It says in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 7, There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. In one sense, it seems to be an oxymoron or sounds contrary. But the reality is very simple to observe. If you've never known, if you have ever known a very wealthy person who has a very high income, but also a lot of money saved up, and also has a lot of good material things, material wealth, like nice cars or trucks and a, a very nice large home and all kind, the best of furnishings and tools and things that make life easier. You understand the best appliances and always have a full pantry and always have a full fridge with the finest of things, the finest things that money could buy, essentially. Um, on the outside, it seems like the man or the woman, the person is happy or doing well for themselves. But, in many cases, you'll find that they're very poor in spirit. They're very poor in godly, divine, righteous character. They're very poor in the wisdom of God. Very poor in these things. Very poor in righteousness. You'll find that they are covetous. You'll find that they are greedy. You'll find that they're very lustful. You find that they have various forms of vanity and debauchery and all kinds of spiritual uncleanness that they are in bondage to. And when you have an abundance of material things and money and things of that nature, you tend to be more poor in spiritual things than somebody who is not as wealthy or someone who, is, who chooses to not chase after riches. Because with the, uh, the acquisition of material things, as Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And so if your heart is in or invested in, or your eye is gazing upon vanity, your eye is gazing upon and searching for, and you're finding your identity and your happiness and your purpose in the acquiring of earthly things, your life is built on sinking sand. Your life is built on something that is temporal and vain and ultimately eternally useless. But the scripture says here, there is one that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. So a man could have not very much. He could not be very wealthy. He could not have a high income. He could not have much money, if any at all, saved up. He might live week to week, month to month. You understand, his fridge not might be as full as many other people. His pantry might not be as full as other people. He might not have the nicest cars, the newest cars, the nicest of things, but he has good things, and he has things that are good and that help him and his family get through life, you understand. And there are people who are literally living in poverty, who can be the most happiest, the most thankful, the most cheerful, the most righteous, the most joyful, the most just, the most wise, the most understanding, the most compassionate people that walk this earth. And of course, most, many of them are born again followers of Jesus Christ who have this attitude or this disposition. And so we as people who follow Jesus, there's a good number of us that live in America or live in Western culture or we don't chase after education, we don't chase after worldly things or worldly money, yet you'll see in our lives those things are present. God has blessed us. God has given us increase. But at the same time, we're not chasing after these things. We're chasing after righteousness. We're chasing after faith. We're chasing after uh, grace the grace that we need to please God. We're chasing after conformity to the nature of Jesus Christ. These are the true riches. Jesus says to some people in the scriptures to sell all that you have and give it to the poor and lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. The rich man in scriptures that Jesus talked about had plenty and he got rich and he said to himself that, you know, my barns are full. What will I do? I'll tear them down and build new that I may hold all of these things that I've acquired. 
And the scriptures say, Jesus says, Thou fool, this night your soul shall be required of you, and then whose things will these be that you have acquired? So it's not in the acquisition of material things, or money, or education, or earthly security that makes people happy, or joyful, or rich. No, it's knowing God. It's being one with God. It's being spiritually mature. It's being at peace and joy with God. It's being righteous and having wisdom. Is not wisdom better than rubies and knowledge finer than choice gold? Yea, is not faith and the knowledge of God more valuable than anything in this earth? My brethren, we need to be like the scripture which says, There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. But there is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. My brethren, it is time for you and I, and the sheep of God, to become very wealthy in the things of God, to become wealthy in faith, to become wealthy in love, to become wealthy in truth, to become wealthy in righteousness, in meekness, humility, wisdom, and understanding. You understand what I'm saying here. These are the true riches, my brethren. And you cannot have them, you cannot chase after them both. You cannot serve both of them. You cannot serve God and mammon. You choose this day. If the Lord be God, then serve him. But if Baal be God, then serve him. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. And you'll find out where the true riches are, my brethren. Many of you, this is just me preaching to the choir. But maybe someone out there needs reminded of this truth. Or maybe somebody needs to just come face to face with this truth for the first time. There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. And there is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all that you need to get through this life. And this modern age shall be added unto you. But seek ye first, Jesus Christ, seek ye first the wisdom and the righteousness and the life that is above where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. And all that you need to get through this life, and even some things you don't need, will be added to you. But above all, be loyal to Jesus and his word. And don't seek earthly things. Don't set your mind on earthly things. But set your mind and your ambitions on getting wealthy in the Spirit. Grace.